Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Dirty Dirty coming at you with my first episode of Crucible University. And in this episode, we're going to be covering how to be successful, how to win as a solo player in PvP. Right now, Destiny 2 is all about teamwork and team shots. If you're running solo against a full clan on the other side, it is very difficult to win, but it is not impossible. If you follow these five basic dirty tips on how to be successful in PvP as a solo player, you will win more matches, you will get more kills, and that is a dirty guarantee. But first, I want to give you a little life motto that I learned while I was in the army, and that is attention to detail, teamwork is the key. That is a great motto to live your life by, and that spills over into PvP as well. So my first tip, and the number one tip I have, is pay attention to that mini-map, that radar in your upper left-hand screen. That thing is a source of information, it's a wealth of knowledge, and if you don't pay attention to that, you will get smoked. See, for instance, if you're looking at the, the mini-map, right, and you see a big sea of red on the mini-map in front of you, and you notice that all your teammates have just died, or they're behind you, what you should do, huh? Well, common sense should tell you, I want to turn around, and rejoin my teammates because that's that gives you the best chance to win in destiny 2 is team shotting hanging out with your teammates shooting enemies together so not only does it tell you where you're at and where your teammates are at it tells you what the weapon to use and for the encounter that's coming up so if your radar is flashing red closer towards the middle that means there's somebody right in front of you and maybe you should use a weapon for close encounters like a submachine gun or a side on to the opposite of that if it's blinking red to the top, far away, maybe you choose to use something that's long-range engagement, like a scout rifle, or a slow-firing auto rifle like the Euro's Gift, or the half Dan D. I cannot stress enough how important it is to watch your radar. So moving on to the second tip, and that is withdrawal, withdrawal, and you guessed it, withdrawal. But that doesn't mean at the first sign of enemy contact, you turn tail and run. No, it means you have to play smart. So if you have two or three enemies in front of you and you're engaging them, what should you do? Should you just stand your ground and try to smoke three guys? You're probably going to die. No. What, com what I would do and what common sense is telling you to do is turn around, withdraw, go back to your teammates. Maybe you'll bait them back to your teammates and they'll get smoked. Maybe all you need to do is run back, you know, five, ten feet, get behind the wall and, sh and pick them off one at a time. What I'm trying to get at here is though, if you have a disadvantage, if you are outnumbered, you need to withdraw and go back to your teammates. Enough with withdrawal, let's move on to dirty number three tip, and that is weapon choice. Now I'm not telling you to use the meta, I'm telling you to use the right tool for the job. And a weapon is nothing but a tool. So if you're, let's say, hang a drywall, would you hang drywall with a hammer or would you hang drywall with a, with a drill? And a lot of that picking the right weapon, picking the right tool for the job, is what kind of play style you're going to play. So now if, you, if you're playing in the back of the map, playing the lanes, I'd go with the scout rifle. And use the scout rifle that you feel most comfortable with. Is Mida multi-tool a good scout rifle to use? Absolutely is. But there's other ones just as good. But I would not, you know, run double scouts. I'd run something close range. So complement it with the Last Hope or the Rattler or anything, anything close range, like a submachine gun. And for the flip side, so if, you're, if, you, if you like playing up close, if it's, if it's a small up close map, go with the submachine gun as a primary, then go with the auto rifle as a secondary. You know, just something to think about. Use the right tools for the job. Moving on to dirty tip number four, and that is stay calm. And I know sometimes that's hard to do, but at the end of the day, this is a video game, folks. You should not be panicking, you should not be sweaty, you should not be breaking your controller. You just need to stay calm. Take a deep breath, don't worry about it so much, it is just a video game. And the calmer you are, the better off you're going to be in engagements, the more clear you're going to think, and the better off you'll be in general as a solo player in PvP. And then tip number five is to have fun. If you're not having fun, folks, turn it off. Do something else, go play some PvE, do something else, because it's not worth wasting your time playing a video game when you're not having fun. And when you're having fun, you feel good, and when you feel good, you play good. So if you're not having fun, folks, you find yourself getting frustrated, getting pissed, want to break your controller, want to kick your dog, want to slap your girl, 
turn it off, do something else, um, and come back at a later time. So just a quick recap of the top five dirty tips of being successful in solo play PvP. The first is watch your radar. The second is withdrawal, withdrawal, withdrawal. The third is weapon choice. The fourth is stay calm. And the fifth is have fun. And that concludes the first lesson of Crucible University. Make sure to tune back in next Wednesday while we have a lesson called There is no I in PvP. And if you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button below. Your input is always appreciated. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. And the Dirty Dirty is out.